Hello and welcome to Twist List, today we are looking at, Top 10 Tantalizing Facts About Sex in the Middle Ages. Under the heavy influence of the church, sexual acts during the Middle Ages were policed to an extreme. Despite this state of oppression, people still liked sex. And as you are about to find out, sex during those times was far more interesting than you would expect. At number 10 we have, prostitution was considered a necessary evil. Prostitution was rife throughout the Middle Ages, and while the clergy weren't happy about it, they made little effort to stop it. Clerics realized that many men needed this outlet and that a lack of prostitution could do more harm than good. They feared that otherwise, men would corrupt respectable women or, even worse, turn to homosexuality. Despite being tolerated, there were ordinances that reflected prostitutes slowly standing in society. They were obligated to wear certain types of clothing so that they could be distinguished from ladies. They had to live in certain areas of cities and had no legal standing in a court of law. Brothels were usually thinly disguised as bathhouses or craft shops like embroideries, where women could serve as apprentices. The ninth spot on the list is occupied by, impotence was grounds for marriage annulment. Many European countries during the Middle Ages had laws which regarded consummation as an integral part of the marriage ceremony. Therefore, if someone was unable or unwilling to procreate, their partner could request an annulment. An inability to perform the marital duty could result in a trial where the man had to prove that he was physically capable of having sex. There are dozens of reported cases of impotence trials in medieval times. One of the most famous occurred in 1198, between King Philip II of France and his second wife, Ingeborg, daughter of Danish King Valdemar I. For some reason, Philip hated Ingeborg and didn't want to have her as Queen of France. In a strange twist, the man was actually the one arguing that the marriage had not been consummated, pleading temporary impotence. Number 8 on our list is, women used contraceptives. Since ancient times, humans have developed numerous techniques to avoid conception. However, until recently, historians believed that usage of contraceptives dropped sharply during the Middle Ages. For starters, the Catholic Church frowned greatly upon them, since they say all procreation is a gift from God and the entire reason to get married. Furthermore, scholars believe that women would not be interested in limiting pregnancies, anyway, due to high infant mortality rates. However, demographic studies show that pregnancy rates decreased significantly in women over 30, suggesting that they employed various contraceptive methods. Even so, written records of these practices are very scarce, due likely to the church's influence and staunch opposition to contraception. Historians believe this created an oral culture of contraception, where the tricks of the trade were passed down from midwife to midwife. Coitus interruptus was a common birth control method, as were plant-based contraceptives, such as a pessary made out of lily root and rue. At number 7 we have, the church thought midwives forced women into sex with the devil. The late Middle Ages were characterized, among other things, by prolific witch hunts, which saw tens of thousands of people, mostly women, persecuted for witchcraft. Numerous suspicious practices could get you declared a witch, and sometimes, this included midwifery. Things got worse after Pope Innocent VIII issued the papal bull Summis Desiderans Effectibus in 1484, acknowledging the existence of witches and approving their prosecution. In response, Inquisitor Heinrich Kramer wrote the Malleus Maleficarum, still considered the most important treatise on witchcraft. Kramer claimed that nobody harmed the Catholic faith more than midwives. He accused midwives of tricking young women into having sex with the devil and then using unbaptized infants for witchcraft. Despite the influence of the Malleus Maleficarum, many historians now argue that midwives were rarely accused of witchcraft. Although they are mentioned in other demonology texts, midwives as witches is regarded as a modern myth brought on by works of earlier historians like Margaret Murray. Number 6 on the list is, clergymen could sometimes get married. The history of clerical marriages during the Middle Ages is long and convoluted, with numerous changes occurring over the centuries. At the start of the era, Byzantine Emperor Justinian the Great annulled all marriages of members of the Holy Order and declared all of their children illegitimate. The law of celibacy remained in place for hundreds of years, but it wasn't always enforced with particular fervor. There was also a distinction made between clergymen who were allowed to marry and married men who were allowed to become clergy. The latter was more common, 
although typically only if it was their first marriage, and the men were usually expected to show sexual continence once they joined the clerical ranks. After the Great Schism of 1054, both churches became stricter, and celibacy was enforced again. Clerical marriages were prohibited at the First Council of the Lateran in 1123. These marriages became common again during the Protestant Reformation, as Martin Luther himself was married to Katharina von Bora. The fifth spot on the list is occupied by, lesbianism was considered a medical problem. While homosexuality was a hot topic during the Middle Ages, attention was usually focused on men. There is very little mention of female homosexuality. One of the few medieval laws that specifically targets lesbianism comes from the mid-13th century French treatise Les Livres de Justice et de Plot, the Book of Justice and of Pleas. Female sodomy receives a similar punishment to its male counterpart, mutilation for the first two offenses and burning for the third. Lesbianism was regarded as a medical problem brought on by one of two disorders, the first came from the ancient Greek physician Galen, who advised that lack of sex would cause a seed buildup in women's wombs. The treatment involved an orgasm, generally brought on by a midwife with a hot poultice. The other condition was called ragadia of the womb. It was believed that women could develop penis-like protuberances outside their vaginas, which would make them want to have sex with other women. Number 4 on the list is, there was romance, just not in marriage. Historically, marriage has been regarded as a utilitarian practice, not one done out of love. However, the High Middle Ages did give birth to a new literary concept that depicted romance like never before. The concept is known as courtly love, although this term was popularized in 19th century France, whereas the contemporary term was finamour. It rose out of the poetry of 11th century troubadours from the French regions of Aquitaine and Champagne. These works exalted the virtues of romance between a knight and a lady. There were several common characteristics to the affair, it was secret, aristocratic, and extramarital. The woman was almost always married, and the illicitness of their relationship only enhanced their love. Courtly love emphasized traits like chivalry and nobility, traits we still ascribe to medieval knights even today. However, we have no evidence that such practices ever transcended poems and existed in the real world. At the third place we have, there was cross-dressing. Cross-dressing hasn't been regarded as an accepted practice until recently, and it's still frowned upon in many parts of the world. Unsurprisingly, it was taboo in medieval England, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. One Oxford study presented the cases of 13 women who were cited for cross-dressing in England during the 15th century. Records show that male cross-dressing was just as, if not more, prevalent. Most cross-dressers tended to be prostitutes who engaged in this practice for their, or their partners, sexual desire. Authorities at the time went to great lengths to downplay the pervasiveness of such acts, claiming they were vices from other cultures perpetrated by foreigners. At the second spot is, missionary was the preferred position. The church considered sex a means to an end for procreation. That's how missionary became the default position, man on top and face to face was thought to give the best chances for pregnancy. They feared that any other position might confuse the natural order. Some positions like sex at ego, from behind, were considered beastly and were thought to blur the lines between man and animal. Oral and anal sex were strictly forbidden by church authorities throughout the Middle Ages. Since there was no chance of procreation, these would have been purely for sexual pleasure which was viewed as a lustful sin. As time went by, certain officials became somewhat more progressive. During the 13th century, German friar Albertus Magnus ranked five positions from most to least natural, missionary, side by side, seated, standing, and at ergo. While missionary was still the number one pick, he regarded the others as morally questionable but not mortally sinful. And finally, at number one, there were punishments for every sexual sin. When it came to punishments, the church wanted to make sure they got things right. That's why the Middle Ages saw the appearance of penitentials, books detailing the rules for penance for every sin under the sun. They came about from priests who started documenting the sins they heard during confession and the penances set for each one. Unsurprisingly, there were quite a few sins involving sex. There were also quite a few penitentials, but one of the most influential was the Pienitential Theodori by Theodore of Tarsus, Archbishop of Canterbury. According to Theodore, men fornicating with men or with animals had to do penance for ten years. 
women fornicating with women had to do penance for three years. Masturbation meant that men had to abstain from meat for four days, while women had to repent for a whole year. This only applied to virgins or widows, as married women earned more penance, of course. Ejaculating seed into the mouth was the worst evil and required penance for life. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more then please hit the subscribe button.